I'm here with Bethany Macri. She is a software engineer on the Etsy core platform team. Bethany, welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your background. I studied literature uh, in college and planned on going to law school. Uh, after college, I went to work in a law firm and even went so far as to study for the LSAT and take the LSAT. And as I was getting ready to apply to law school, I freaked out, for lack of a better phrase, and decided that I did not want to be a lawyer. I didn't want to argue with people all day. So I started making a list and really doing some soul searching about what I liked doing. And I noticed that on this list, they were all the most technical aspects of my job. The attorney that I was supporting was also a trustee of about 40 trusts, and I was doing all of the performance tracking with Excel of those trusts. And I realized that I really liked uh, building those spreadsheets and making them talk to each other and building reports uh, and exporting things. And I had never thought of myself as a technical person, but I thought if I enjoy this so much, why not try something new? So I transitioned into tech and got a position as a product manager at a startup in San Francisco. And I thought that product management might be a good balance for um, hard and soft skills, but it just wasn't as close to the building aspect that I wanted it to be. So uh, in February of 2012, I quit uh, my product management job and started to code full time. And the rest is history. What steps did you take to actually learn to code? My boyfriend at the time was a software engineer, and he was completely supportive of me learning how to code and installed Python on my computer. And I just started reading everything I could about um, Python and web applications and MySQL. And I started taking Udacity courses and um, reading books, started talking to the engineers uh, from the company that I was a product management for, and tried to borrow all of their books, and just um, went at it. There was no um, real sequential uh, learning. And I think that code, learning to code is like that. It just takes hours in front of the terminal and being frustrated. And uh, I just completely threw myself into it. Did you notice any kind of difference in the community, the way you were treated uh, being a product manager versus being a coder? I think people respond with more surprise when they hear that I'm a software engineer. Um, I, I usually get something to the effect of, really? Um, and even people who you know I went to high school with or college with who I bump into kind of say, how did you get into that? And uh, as a product manager, that wasn't asked of me at all. In terms of um, my team and how I am treated um, by each company uh, in each respective role, as a software engineer, I'm always included in the discussion. And as a product manager, even if it was my product and my timeline, um, I wasn't always at the table. And as a software engineer, I'm never excluded from any discussions. So you were a completely self-taught coder. How did you hear about hacker school? I was, at the time, um, teaching myself how to program, and I was working out of a women's co-working space in San Francisco because after about a month and a half, I realized that if I try to work from home, I am going to go completely stir crazy. So I was taking a break at this co-working space, and I was on Hacker News, and I saw the press release. And I had never heard of Hacker School before, but of course I loved Etsy because I was a, a customer. and. Uh, I think I read it two or three times and just almost started crying and just thought this is the most fortuitous timing. I applied within about 20 minutes. I did not um, filter my answers to the hacker school application at all. I just went and the only thing that I checked over was the actual code that I submitted. They make you submit um, a small snippet of code and that I did check and made sure it ran. Um, and from there, I checked my email every morning, like a kid at Christmas, and just waited for a response. And when I finally got it, got the first interview, and then got the second interview, I, I remember closing my laptop after Skyping with um, David after the second interview, and I just kind of like squealed <laughs> and called my mom and said, now I have to find an apartment for the summer. So you were living in San Francisco and had to transition to the Brooklyn area. Um, 
What was that like? And also, so what happened at Hacker School? What was the experience like for you there? So first thing, I would not have been able to do any of this had it not been for the grant that Etsy uh, supplied. Um, I was not earning at the time. I had budgeted out about uh, eight months of time before I needed to get a job um, in order to support myself. So uh, moving to Brooklyn for the summer would not have been feasible without that. Um, the experience of hacker school was absolutely amazing. It was the first time that they had um, a bunch of students. There were about 50 of us. Uh, we were almost 50% female. And I never felt like I couldn't ask a question or that um, even as one of the more or, or the most inexperienced person there, I never felt embarrassed or shy or like um, people would ostracize me or laugh for asking questions. And that is the, I'm so grateful for that experience. So did Hacker School have a particular curriculum that everyone followed? Were there activities that you did together as students or separately in groups? Tell us more about that. So I was just interested in making things work. That is what I like doing. That's what I get a high from. Um, so I think I would be happy doing a lot of technical things uh, as long as I was getting that feedback and satisfaction of making things work. But because I you know, was not earning and was making this huge career change, I had to make myself marketable. And for that reason, I decided to focus on web development. At Hacker School, David, in uh, the first day, uh, in his talk on the first day, told us, do not make web applications. It's a waste of your time, especially if you've built them before. I had not made or shipped a web application, but I had been doing web application type things. I'd been scraping sites, I'd been using Django, I'd been using Python. So I went home and thought, how can I better use my time this summer? And I started writing bash scripts. And eventually, um, that became the thing that made Etsy interested in me. I met Mike Britton, who was then the director of infrastructure at um, a hacker school and Etsy. Uh, actually, it was just a hacker school career night. And he asked me, what do you like about software engineering? And I said, I love watching things scroll through in a terminal and just realizing I did that. And he laughed. and. I was kind of taken aback because I felt like he was laughing at me and he said, I just hear so few people say that. So it was actually the lack of curriculum at Hacker School and the fact that they, they did steer you away from doing things that you'd done before. But other than that, you were the master of your own um, course there. And had, had I been steered more towards um, conventional things and not tapped into my interest in back-end infrastructure, I might not have um, gotten the opportunity at Etsy that I did. So the Hacker School program sounds like a very self-directed kind of program. Is that, um, what type of personality do you think would best benefit by something like that? It sounds like it's not for everyone. I think the most important um, characteristic um, that a person needs to go through hacker school is just burning curiosity. They r very much encourage you to um, get a question and define it and go deep sea diving. Um, I think that if you are incredibly inexperienced, as in have never coded before, um, one, you won't know if you like it, and so they really seek out people who know that they love programming. And I don't think that um, at that stage uh, you'd be best served by hacker school because you would just spend a lot of time being frustrated. So I think a little bit of ramp up time is, is necessary. Um, another thing is not being embarrassed to ask questions um, because there are people of you know, all different experience levels and you will only benefit from the more experienced engineers if you have no pride attached or ego attached to the questions that you have. So Etsy has talked a lot lately about how they've changed their hiring process recently. So tell us what it was like for you. And if you also interviewed with other companies, how was that different from the Etsy hiring process? One thing that really stuck out was that Etsy had been very explicit about how, uh, how much they wanted female engineers to be working for them. Um, that was incredibly important to me because they had 
provided me the opportunity to go to New York and learn how to code for the summer. Um, but the thing that really stuck out to me was that they listened. Uh, Mark Hedlund and Mike Britton, uh, when I was talking to them at the career night, really listened to what my interests were. And when I was brought into an interview, they had me uh, meet Jason Wong and John Gula, who were the um, managers of the core platform and dev tools teams. Those two teams are doing exactly the kind of work that I had expressed to Mike and Mark that I wanted to do. And the fact that they had said, you know, okay, we'll, we'll kind of work with you and we'll, um, you know, find work that interests you was all that I needed. So do you have any advice for women or really anyone interested in making a career transition into tech? I would say if you are passionate about it and you think you can do it, do it. There, You do not have to be a genius to get into this field. Um, you don't have to fake anything. You don't have to be nerdy. Um, there are a lot of options for you if you want to be a developer or in operations or in IT or something like that. You don't have to fit one mold. So if you think that you have an interest in this, I would say just do it and commit to it and, and know that it's possible. So the Etsy process for a hiring does sound like it's a bit unique. So do you have any thoughts about how other companies should change the way that they hire? I think if companies are looking to hire women, they should make that explicit. Um, either formally in writing or to the candidate personally. Um, I know that for some candidates uh, it means a lot to them to have a female on the interview panel. That's not something that um, I felt um, that I needed to feel comfortable. What I needed was that they listened to what I wanted to do and they made it clear that I could ask questions and the fact that I was more inexperienced than the others on the team was not going to you know, deter me or um, frustrate my teammates. So I think making it clear that this is an environment where you're encouraged to ask for help and it, you're encouraged to say, I don't know how to do this, um, is incredibly important. Well, Bethany, thank you very much. And um, here's to a great career in tech. <laughs>